Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY. Today is our last video in our foundation repair series. What I'm going to show you in this video today is how we formed and poured our columns and also how we set our beam. So let's get started. <music> The first thing we need to do is we need to make a form and this is a two by eight so we got seven and a half inches deep. Um, you can go deeper if you want. This is going to be our base for our column. Um, this would be probably about the minimum for something like this. Um, I definitely wouldn't go with a two by six because um, that's going to be five and a half inches and that's kind of on the thin side. Uh, but this right here will be doing fine for what we need it to do. So I just went ahead and made this uh, up and I squared it and then I just put a plank over the top and screwed that in to kind of keep it in square. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take some concrete stakes and we're going to stake that around uh, just two of the sides. You normally this uh, helps it from blowing out um, but with just it being so small I don't think we're going to have a problem with that but I don't want it moving around and I want it to be in the exact spot that we want it. So we're going to put two stakes around it. To get the height of our form, what we did is we took a rotary laser and just made sure that all four of our corners were at the exact height that we needed and then that's when we screwed in our concrete stakes. The next thing that we can do is we can go ahead and take this bracing off now that we have our concrete stakes in place. Now we're ready for our rebar in our base. And what we're going to do to elevate that off the bottom of the pad is I just have some bricks that we're going to put down and use those to sit the rebar on top of. You can also use chairs that they have at the store, uh, but this is something I had laying around that is really cheap. For our rebar, we just have some half inch rebar. I welded it together um, as one unit. It makes it a little bit more simple. Um, so it's welded to a square base. Um, we're just going to put that base right on top of those bricks. And um, you don't have to weld it, you can wire tie it together. That's a lot cheaper, especially if you don't have a welder. But this kind of just makes it one unit and it's a little bit more portable for me to get around and move around. For our rebar, what we did is we welded a square base, put some angles on the edges. So when we bent our long rebar that goes up through the column, it will catch those and be able to sit on it. It also gives us a place to place the blocks to rise up our base rebar. We are keeping the rebar about an inch and a half from the all sides. And as you can see, we also welded the base. Um, you don't need to do that, but it just makes it a lot more stable, um, especially when you're pouring this in. You don't really have to hold anything and it's just there. Next thing that we're going to do is we are going to form up for our column um, because our footer has dried. So what we have here is we just have some three quarter inch plywood and some two by fours that we made forms of. They're only four foot high because of being able to get in here with concrete and vibing all this stuff down. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put these in place now. So now what we can do to hold this um, form down to our footer is we can take a two by four and when we made these, we had these rise an inch and a half from the bottom. That way we can take this board, simply slip it right underneath. And now we're gonna take um, some tap cons and run them right down through this two by four. So now what we can do is since we have our board attached to our footer, we can just run a screw down through here and this will hold the entire thing in place. So what this is gonna help do is it's gonna help from push from the bottom. It's also gonna keep our form from floating up when we vibe it. And it's also gonna keep it from blowing out at the bottom.
Now that we have our form securely in place, this thing is rock solid. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put these chamfering strips in the corners. This is gonna give us a nice edge to our form instead of having harsh corners. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our chamfer strips, put them into the corner, make sure they're nice and tight and flush with the top and then just send some nails into the side of the form. So we got our forms off and I'm really happy the way this bottom half turned out. Uh, we got very little, maybe one, two, and a couple little small holes. And that was due mostly to the vibrator allowing us not to have huge pockets of air on the side. Without the vibrator, I think we would have a mess with this because it's so tall. We're doing so much concrete in a narrow area. So definitely the concrete vibe is a must for doing these things and it turned out really well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna strip these forms, get all the concrete off of them, and reset for our top half. Okay, so what we've done is we added three sides to this um, and then put on our last side. It's extremely difficult, but we don't have the room to just assemble all four sides and then slip it over the rebar. Um, if you had them cut off and then just drilled them down and epoxy them in, you could do that. We just opted to leave the rebar there, that way it has the most strength. And then we just put the three sides on, screwed them together off of the pillar and then just kind of took ratchet straps, um, tied them to the top and bottom, that way everything is tight together. And it kind of gave us a little bit of uh, clamping power down here to keep it in place as we maneuvered it around. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna straighten this thing up as best we can. We have our green laser up here, shot from the other side off of our reference uh, marks that we had in previous videos. So what we're gonna do is just level this top out. We need it perfectly level because this is what our I-beam is gonna be sitting on on the top. So all we're gonna do is just uh, sink more of our screws in here. We'll probably leave these um, tie downs on here for banding um, just because it's not as well anchored as it was on the bottom. We have nothing um, to screw into to help um, from this blowing out. So we're just gonna sink two tap cons in here on each side to secure it in place that way we don't get any tilt on it and we might put in some shoring also um, that way it doesn't get it messed up and just tilt while we're shoveling concrete in okay so we have our forms in place everything screwed into the sides like we had on the bottom the only difference is we have just two tap cons on each form at the bottom that's holding the base in to our lower portion and then we also have some supports here on the side going down to concrete stakes, um, helping it move um, laterally and then horizontally on a plane. So we have that in place. We also have some straps up top just to help with some bowing and stuff because we're not very low to the ground. We're gonna be shoveling up into here. So we're gonna be moving it around a lot more than where it was on the bottom. We also have this one here on the bottom to help pinch the forms onto the lower part of the column also. Just anything we can do basically to keep this thing from moving around because we definitely don't want it shifting while it's up here and filled with concrete. This is gonna be extremely heavy. 
Um, so again, we have our um, supports on either side. I didn't want to put any here uh, because this is where we're going to be wheeling the wheelbarrow in and then trying to shovel up in. So I wanted to keep them on the back sides. Best case scenario is have them on all four sides. That way you have a very strong structure. But we got to deal with what we have right now. So this is the setup. So we'll uh, probably wait a little bit. Uh, it's raining out right now today. So we'll get a clear day and then we'll start pouring this concrete again. We made sure that this top was perfectly level on all sides because we want our beam to be sitting on here and we want everything to be perfectly level so that we don't get any type of wobble with our beam. Once we completed uh, the second column, we tore the form off. Um, you can see us here doing the top portion of it. Um, it was the exact same way we did the bottom. Once we finished up that second column, we moved on to the first right here by the door. And again, uh, after every single wheelbarrow full, we vibrated everything down to eliminate all of those air pockets um, because it is such a narrow form. Once we have everything um, up to the top. We just vibe it again and went over it with a concrete trowel and just gave it a rough finish to get the top portion on. Once we completed all of our columns, what we did is we had my Kubota tractor rigged up to haul the beam in. Here you can see a 35 gallon water tote on the one side of the tractor to offset the 500 pound beam on the other. It was just too much torque uh, with just the beam itself. Uh, we also had uh, my sister sit on the back uh, because it was extremely heavy um, in the front and to eliminate tipping we had her stand on the back. We just kind of walked it up the hill and got it in line for the basement. Once we got to the door, there was a very narrow opening that we could go through. And right here, you can see the finished poured column that we have. And off to the right of it, right here, we have a temporary support column for the corner of the house. And we just have this narrow little window that we can slide the beam in through. Um, that's why we use the 4x4 and have the beam rigged out so far uh, because this is the only way we could get it in without having to rearrange all of our floor jacks. Uh, so this was the easiest way to get it into the basement. Once we got it in so far, uh, we just kind of uh, lifted the beam out and just kind of shimmied it in the rest of the way. Once we got it in so far, we re-rigged our 4x4 on the bucket because it was too wide. And we just kind of wrapped around the middle of the beam um, and just pulled it in under balance. My mom acted as a counterweight um, in this portion. And then what we did is we just kind of set the beam down on cinder blocks and we seesawed it back and forth and just build up cinder blocks to gain our height. Um, this was the easiest way, uh, instead of just muscling it up, we just kind of seesawed it back and forth and used this right here as a pivot point to do so. Uh, we used the tractor with the beam underneath it to uh, set it. Here you can see that we are setting the beam on the column. Uh, this is the last portion of our rise. Uh, it was a little tricky once we got the cinder block stacked so high. Uh, but once we did uh, have it set on the column, we just kind of lifted it in place. All right, guys, so that wraps it up for this video. It is our ninth and last video in our foundation repair series. The only thing that we're going to do beyond this is permanently pin our I-beam down to our column. We're just going to drill down through the flange and place anchor bolts to permanently set it. Uh, so we made nine videos in this series because it was way too much to compress into one video So we split it up. So I'm going to go over briefly what those videos were So if you want to look back through them and are is interested in one specific one, you can go ahead and do so So our very first video was our walkthrough and planning I showed you guys the foundation wall and the issues that we were having with the hard lean on it and why we needed to remove it 
Our second video was calculating load on our foundation wall. We needed to know how much weight we needed to support um, underneath our floor joists with beams and floor jacks um, to properly uh, buy the number of floor jacks that we needed and also to build our beams, which leads us into our third video. We built our own beams to support underneath the floor jacks, or excuse me, the floor joists. Um, it saved us a lot of money from either buying an LVL or a steel I-beam. Our fourth video was how to set up, properly set up a floor jack um, and the location of it to give it the most strength of support. And then we went into our fifth video, which is actually jacking up the house. We had a sag in our floor that we straightened out and we also lifted it up off of the foundation wall. And that leads us into our sixth video, which is where we ran into some issues or problems. Uh, there was a, a rim beam instead of a rim board um, like traditional framing. This is a, a house built in the early 1900s, so they had a rim board, or excuse me, a rim beam, and the walls were being supported on that. So as we lifted up on the joists, it kind of cracked them a little bit because all of that weight was on the beam instead of the joists. So we had to go in and excavate a little bit of the wall and jack put floor jacks underneath that to help support it. And then we could go and do our seventh video was where we took out the uh, remaining fieldstone foundation all the way to the dirt floor. And then we have our eighth video where we went and dug for our pits. We did our column and pit prep uh, where we excavated out. Uh, we have an open pit over here and for the one by the door, we have a confined spaces pit. So you kind of get a gist of the complications that come with different style pits and uh, the things that you need to deal with but there. And then of course the video that you're watching right now, our ninth one where we formed up and poured our columns and then set our beam. So there's a ton of information in there. Go ahead back through, watch them all, um, or if you have specific problems that you need to address, it was a little bit better to divvy up the videos and go a little bit more in depth with each step instead of an all encompassing video. So if you want to, go ahead, check those out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and head over to Appalachian DIY to see more of the foundation repair series. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you next time.